So I recently took a vacation to Disneyland where I got to check out Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. I've been very excited about this new land ever since they announced it and had a lot of fun there. I was asked a lot on social media to give my opinion on various aspects of Galaxy's Edge, so I thought it'd be kind of cool to take a few videos to just tell you about some of my experiences. In today's video, we're gonna focus on the $200 lightsaber experience. Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and hey, let's start here. If you're new to the channel, why not hitting that subscribe button? If you enjoy things like Star Wars and toys, you're probably gonna like what I've got going on here on this channel. So let's talk about the lightsaber experience, or as every one of those clickbaity news sites are gonna make sure that you know the $200 lightsaber experience. It's weird how it's got that kind of negative connotation, and I get it, $200 is a lot of money, and a lot of people look at that and go, oh my gosh, $200 for a lightsaber, that is crazy. Um, but I don't know, like, of course $200 is a lot of money for a souvenir, but if you're somebody who collects a lot of Star Wars products, you know that that's not really that far off of a price point for a replica lightsaber. For example, if we're talking about the recent Hasbro Black Series uh, Force FX lightsabers, which are like their replica sabers with the light up blades, those retail for around $160 or $170. Heck, I remember way back in like 2005, I bought myself one of the Master Replica Mace Windu lightsabers, and even back then those were like $120. So, you know, it's pretty typical for a replica lightsaber to cost around the $170 price point, of course, unless you find a good deal on it or find it on sale somewhere. So since we're building something that's close to those replica kind of sabers, the price point isn't really that far off what somebody would pay for that. The added bonus with this is that it's an entire experience. And so I wanna tell you guys kind of about this experience. So this is something that you definitely wanna make a reservation for, at least right now. Um, I know this just opened up in Walt Disney World also. I don't have any personal experience with that, but it does seem very, very busy there right now because it's so brand new. Of course, this has been open in Disneyland for several months now, I think since back in May, and yet the lightsaber experience itself still requires an actual reservation because it's so popular. This is actually really easy to do. I was able to get on Disneyland's website and book a reservation for this once I was two weeks out from my trip. So if you're staying at a resort or anything like that, it's pretty easy to be able to do this. You can also get right on Disneyland's app and you can book it that way. You can even do it while you're in the park. You can see if there's any openings or anything. So make sure you do that. That's a serious pro tip. Book this ahead of time. That way you know you've got a slot for it. Also, fair warning, one of the things I found out, um, since this is such a high demand thing, if you make an appointment and then you no show your appointment, you're at risk of getting charged that $200 anyway because they're gonna have your credit card on file. So if you make an appointment, stick with it or make sure you go to customer service or something so you can get that squared away. So fair warning there if you're planning to do this. All right, so the process itself is actually pretty cool. You show up at a place called Savi's Workshop and when you're outside there, you walk up to one of the cast members who's got like a tablet. That's where you let them know you've got a reservation and they check you in. Once you get checked in, uh, they show you these cool little cards. At least this is the way they did it with me. Sometimes they've got drawers too where they pull out the parts. I showed up like right as my appointment was starting, so I think they kind of rushed me through this process. Uh, but it was still fine. They show you cards which show you the four different types of lightsaber that you can build. And each of these four different types actually has multiple pieces allowing you to mix and match parts to build your um, whatever kind of lightsaber you come up with out of those. So the, the four different parts, and I wanna give a special thanks to the Disney food blog. I'm using their image for this. I didn't think to take a picture myself of these cards that show you, but the different uh, things are the peace and justice version, uh, which looks a lot like a light side kind of, uh, almost like a Luke Skywalker-y kind of saber. You've got the protection and defense. You've got the power and control, which has a very Sith-like vibes to it. And then you've got the elemental nature. Now, this is the one that really stood out to me because it's so unique. Um, this is what I chose. And I chose it because the parts looked so unique. It really looked like something that I couldn't get anywhere else. I really wanted this to feel like something special since I was paying so much money for it. So that's what I chose. Once you make a choice, they give you a pin. 
And this pin is like the symbol of what type of lightsaber you chose to do. Um, this is really interesting because if you are a Disney Parks pin collector, these are official Disney Parks pins, complete with the little Mickey backer thing. And the only way to get these is with the lightsaber experience. So there's gonna be four different ones of these. Um, so that might be troublesome for any completists out there, but it's still, it's a really neat little pin. And what they do, is they tell you to put this little badge on, you wear it before they escort you in to the actual workshop. This pin is what tells the people inside what parts you chose so that they give you the proper tray of parts. So as you walk in, it's a really nice dark lit room. There's a whole story going on here where if you if you weren't aware, the theme, the theming of Galaxy's Edge is that you're at a place called Black Spire Outpost where the First Order has kind of started to occupy and they're looking for members of the resistance. Um, so there's like a whole storyline within this park and when you're in there, you're kind of playing the storyline, which is actually a lot of fun. Um, so with this lightsaber experience, like Savi's workshop is supposed to be like a junkyard kind of thing, but underground, they're building lightsabers to train the next generation of Jedi. It's really, really fun stuff. So basically you get escorted in and they have this whole show and this whole presentation about building your lightsaber, which is just very, very fun. So they talk about the importance of, of the lightsaber, the tool of the Jedi, this and that, uh, the troubling times that we're in. Um, they give you a tray that is for your type of lightsaber that you chose to build. And within this tray, there are two pieces for every part of the lightsaber. So there's like the top piece, the middle section, the bottom piece, and then like the hill, the bottom the, that goes on the very bottom. So it's like four parts basically. Um, and there's two parts on there. So you can mix and match those parts and build it up however you want to. And um, one of the things of course they present to you as you're getting ready to build this is the kyber crystal. This is really neat. They give an explanation for the kyber crystals. There's four colors you can choose from in here being blue, green, red, or purple. And they list off some of the popular Jedis that use e used each of these different kyber crystals to build their lightsabers. And it's really cool. They come around with this uh, little thing that's they walk around with it and they're all glowing, like they're lit up. They're just little plastic crystals, but they're glowing. It's a really neat presentation. They tell you to uh, use your judgment, basically use the force to choose what is your gem what is your kyber crystal i chose the blue uh blue is my favorite lightsaber color um and it's really cool because the first thing they have you do is they take you take that kyber crystal and you place it inside of the hilt before you start building it up and it clicks in there um and this is where you really start even getting some sound effects like you get effects when you clip the kyber crystal in there it makes a sound effect which is really really neat and from this point you just kind of build it piece by piece um, the parts are a mixture of plastic and die cast metal. They are very heavy, so they feel nice and sturdy and solid, and they all kind of just screw together there. Um, it's really fun experience, and I actually do have a lot of footage from that. So right here, I'm gonna go ahead and splice in kind of some cut together scenes. I'm not gonna show the whole thing, um, but I wanna cut together some clips so you guys can just get a sense of what the experience was. Yes. And guess how many times? Chosen 
So overall, it was really fun. I want to say that it was a good 20 minutes, if not a little bit more. So it's a nice basic like show that you get with this entire thing. Um, building the lightsaber was fairly easy for the most part. Um, I did have problem with the Rancor tooth specifically that fits on the bottom, like not catching very well while I was trying to screw it on, but eventually I got it on there and it all fit together fine. Um, it was really cool when different things happened in there. Like if you're a big Star Wars fan, there's some really cool geek out moments in this entire thing. Like the moment that the room went dark and Yoda began talking to us was kind of one of those neat chill inducing moments. And, um, the very end where they have you step forward, place your hand on the hilt, turn on your lightsaber for the first time and then raise it up. When the room just filled up with all of those colors, with all of those blades, that was amazing. <laughs> I mean, like the little kid Star Wars fan in me really came out in that moment. And you could feel like the whole room kind of had this, oh, like moment when we all lit up our lightsabers. So that was really, really neat. So um, once you, you're done with that, they kind of escort you outside and they give everybody a bag for your lightsaber. So this is the bag. Um, this is part of the cost, which is really, really nice. Uh, this is padded, it's really soft to protect your lightsaber. You got this nice little strap so you can wear this on your back. Um, so one of the big things, and then this is another thing I've seen a lot of negative attention for with articles, which is so weird, but they Disney doesn't want you carrying your lightsaber around the parks and I get it. I mean, this is like a big, heavy, really long weapon, essentially. They don't want people running around through Disneyland having sword fights. I get it. So once you get out of there, you are supposed to just kind of holster this, which is fine. After I got done, I actually strapped this on my back and I um, ended up taking a bunch of stuff back to the hotel and dropping it off. I was kind of, I didn't want to carry this around all day. Um, but I do like that you get this nice soft bag. This is also great for travel when you're traveling home. So I flew out to California and I know a lot of people are probably wondering how to get this thing home. I'll let you know that this fits in the carry on perfectly. Um, I had no problems going through security at the airport. In fact, the TSA guy was even like, well, somebody's been to Disneyland as he was like sending this through the scanner. Um, and even on like the smaller plane I had to take um, on the second leg of my trip, this still fit in the overhead with no problem. So as long as you've got space for carry on, um, just carry this on the plane. You'll be totally fine. It'll be a, a lot safer that way as well. All right. So that's the gist of all that. Let me go ahead and show you my lightsaber. Now there she is. That's my lightsaber. So as you can see, I went with the one that had kind of the wood finish on there. It's like a mixture of like a wood look and a metal look. It's got this Rancor tooth on the bottom. I thought that was super unique. So I really, really wanted something that stood out. Like I said, the weight on this is really amazing. Like this is, this is really heavy. It's really, really nice. Um, one of the things I dislike is the designs on there don't seem to match up as well as I would like them to. This is because you have to screw them on in all the different parts and to tighten it up all the way, it seems like they don't really match up. Like specifically what I don't like is how the top portion here doesn't really match up with the design wise with the second portion. Like this should be lined up right here, but if I do that, it's all loose. So I have to tighten it this way and now it's off center. Um, that's probably my biggest complaint about it and I was really disappointed in that. I don't know if they're all like that or if mine's just cut weird, um, but the, it doesn't line up and I don't like that. So that is definitely something uh, worth pointing out and maybe to look out for if you're gonna build one of these yourself. Um, the other complaint I have with the blade here, it's wobbly. Um, so like when I kind of shake the lightsaber, I can feel how loose this is kind of bobbling around in there. You see that? Do you see how wobbly it is? And I wish that was sturdier. I don't know if that's built that way on purpose. I don't know if that's a weird safety thing or what that is. Oh, I just accidentally ignited mine. <laughs> I hit the little button right there. I was trying to save that. Spoiler alert. Um, but yeah, it's a little, it's a little wobbly and I don't know how I really like that part of it. But otherwise it feels nice and solid. I do like the overall feel of it. The weight is really, really nice. So yeah, I, I flipped this button right here and that's where we get our sound effects and our lit, lit, lit blade. <laughs> And you can see how bright it is. Like it looks really great on camera here right now. Um, so your sound actually comes out of the bottom. You can see there's actually cuts in the Rancor tooth here. This is like, so the speaker can really kind of come through. And you can hear when I move it around, it does make the noises, which is really cool. And when I bash it on something, 
see how it flashes and we get the sounds of it hitting. So that is really cool. And I, it's, it's really bright. So I do like that quite a bit. I think that looks really, really good. There you go. One of the other things that's really neat about this, and this might help with travel also if you don't want to put the whole big thing in um, the overhead or whatever, you can remove the blade from the hilt and you do that by giving it, you just press it like this and then you twist and it pops out. And did you hear the sound effect? Like it, it actually makes a noise when you... That's pretty cool. So you can detach this, this comes out, and that way you've just got the hilt. This is also good for anybody that wants to just carry around their lightsaber, hang it from their belt or anything like that. I think that's part of the reason they do that. And also it's really fun because if you try to turn it on while the blade's not there, you get that little spark kind of noise like it's not working. So that's pretty fun. All right, so of course you probably also know that you can buy extra kyber crystals at the shop outside across the street. Um, something Antiquities? Oh my gosh, I can't even remember the name of it. But you'll find it. It's uh, It sells all kinds of cool accessories, lots of fun stuff in there. But they sell extra kyber crystals, so you could buy the other colors if you want the other colors. So they come in these little cases here, and they actually sell them behind the counter. You'll actually see them all on the counter um, back behind there, so you actually have to go up and ask for them. Uh, the reason for this is because the red ones have kind of a blind bag thing going on where there's a potential to get the black kyber crystal instead of the red in there, um, which are extra rare. Um, they don't actually change the color of your blade. Your blade's still red, but it has unique sound effects. Um, they had to start putting them behind the counter because a lot of people figured out a way to like tell what was what and you know, people ruined it for everybody, I guess. Um, so these I think run about $12 a piece if you want extra kyber crystals. I went ahead and got a purple, a green and a red. So now I've got all the basic colors. Um, while I was there, they had also just gotten in white and yellow and I didn't buy those. And now I'm kind of kicking myself because I'm not sure if those change the color of the blade or not, but I, I really wish I would have found out. So this is what the kyber crystals look like. You can see they're just little bitty plastic crystals. They're translucent, they're very cool looking. Um, but you can pop these in your lightsaber and that changes the color of your blade, which is really cool. But it also changes the sound effects. So each of these kyber crystals triggers different sounds for your lightsaber as well, which helps to add to the value of the overall thing because that gives you some new ways to customize it. So it's a bit tricky actually getting in here to change the kyber crystal because you essentially have to take the thing back apart. And uh, that's one of the things that I'm, I'm, I am I'm kind of don't like, but I get it. I get it why it's got to be on the inside. But if you unscrew the two parts here in the middle, you should hopefully be able to kind of pry the middle piece in half because it's like two clamps that come together. Let me see if I can do that real quick. There we go. Just like that. Just like that. Okay. See, it's a little tricky. You're going to have to do a little bit of work, but you can see there's my blue crystal inside there. So I can kind of uh, pop that out. It's actually glowing, which is really neat. You see, see how it's lit and it's glowing? That's really cool. I don't think I even realized that that was like always glowing. I wonder if that's like constantly wearing the batteries out. <laughs> I found this to be a very tricky process getting these things in here. But when you get it in, it actually makes a neat little sound effect and that's cool. And then it lights up like that too. But you really wanna make sure it like clicks in there. There's like a little, uh, a little indent on both the top and the bottom that it's supposed to kind of clip into. And that way it won't like rattle around and it'll stay in place. So make sure you get it clipped on there. Whew, there, gosh, that's a pain. <laughs> okay, so we got it in and now I can uh, close this back up, clip all this into place and we'll screw this back together. The lightsaber is nice and put back together and we're gonna put the blade back in. All right, so now we've got our purple kyber crystal in there. So check this out. So notice the sound effect is completely different when it lights up. The humming is different. A lot of like the, the strikes and everything still sound the same, but it's got a completely different hum than we had with the blue. And you can see how bright that purple is. That is very, very cool. And um, even though it's a little tricky, I'll show you guys the green and the red as well, just so you can see everything all lit up and see what the different sounds are. Thank you. 
So that is my $200 lightsaber as well as the experience. So this is the big question, right? Is it worth it? Is it worth $200 to get a unique lightsaber like this from Galaxy's Edge? I'm gonna say it really depends. And I know that's kind of a cop-out answer, but hear me out on this. For me, it was worth it. I really enjoy this. I think it's nicely done. I have a few minor gripes, which I pointed out, but otherwise I think this is a really cool souvenir. But also the experience was amazing. I thought the entire process of building it was so much fun. I'm glad I got to do that on my first visit to Galaxy's Edge. I'm also glad I got to kind of do it with my son. That was just a really cool thing to experience with him. So for me, yes, it was worth it. If you are just a casual fan, if you don't really collect Star Wars memorabilia, you can probably sit this one out. In fact, if you just want the experience, you can go with somebody else that actually wants to buy one. You're allowed to go in there and watch. I, I went in there with my son, my wife, and my sister, and they all just watched me do it. So you're allowed to bring people in with you. So if you just want to see the experience, um, but don't necessarily want to fork out the money and own one of these, I would definitely recommend going that route. Will I buy another one of these? Honestly, probably not. Uh, unless something happens where down the line they, I don't know, get a bunch of new parts or they change the actual show and I just feel the itch to try it out, then maybe I'll do it again. But as it stands, this is kind of a one and done thing for me. However, that doesn't change the fact that I loved it. I still think this was awesome. I think it was worth the money that I paid. Uh, so if you've got the extra money and this looks like something you wanna do, go for it, man. I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. So there you guys go. That's my look at the lightsaber experience at Galaxy's Edge in Disneyland. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this. Uh, if you've done it yourself, if you've got similar complaints or if you had a better experience, uh, I'd love to hear from you guys. Also stay tuned because I'm also gonna do a couple more of these videos. I'm gonna talk about the droid building experience as well as give some thoughts on Galaxy's Edge and some of the merchandise I picked up. Uh, as well. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Thanks for watching guys and until next time. Ooh.